So continuing from the previous video, uh, where we basically serialized a variable and deserialized it back using text files, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to write to uh, files in binary this time, right? Uh, so what's the issue? What's, what do we have to solve here? Basically the exact same thing. We have here a struct, right? We have a struct and it has two coordinates. It's called point. It has an X and an Y. And what I want to do is first create one of these, one of uh, a variable of this type. So point, I'm going to call it P1. And that's going to have its X value set to, I don't know, let's say 13. And then its Y value set to negative five, for example. And um, I'm going to have another variable here. And what I want to do is write this guy to a binary file and then read it onto this guy. So that at the end I can print its uh, values and they should be the same as P1, right? The values from P2 should be the same as P1. How do we do that using binary files? Well, it's similar to how we did it with just text files. First things first, we have to have uh, file handlers. I'm going to call them here file. I'm going to call it in and out, right? So similar to what we had before. The first step is to open this, uh, this file for reading. So exactly the same function calls. So I'm going to say here F open in my case is underscore S because I'm using a more recent compiler and it sort of warns me that there's a secure, that's what this S stands for version of uh, F open. But if you're using just F open, no worries. It's basically the same thing, except the first parameter is the actual pointer to this guy, right? So the first parameter is a pointer to our handler, right? So here we have a file pointer. And if you want to denote uh, the location of a file pointer, that'd be a file uh, double pointer, basically. So we're just going to get the address of our out because we want to open uh, a file for writing. Then the file name, I'm just going to call it point dot let's say bin this time from binary you can say that that's fine as well you can use any extension really it doesn't matter and then i'm gonna say here i want this third parameter is the mode and similar to when we wrote uh, to text files we just have to say w but suffix this guy with b b from binary so you want to write to this file in binary, not text, right? Cool. So now we have the file opened. Now we have to check if this guy is actually uh, has opened. Does it does exist? It can exist. We have permission to create it, and so on and so forth. You can take a look at the return value of f open underscore s to see what went wrong. In our case, I'm just gonna actually check. Uh, if out is null or not. So if out is null and we know that something bad happened and what we do here, I'm just usually should print an error message, but I'm just going to say here return one, which denotes an error code that's not successful in theory. So from here onwards, we know that this guy is open and we can do some operations with them, such as write to it. So we can use a function that we have used before called f write. And this guy just takes in a place in memory, how much we want to save to that uh, file from that point in memory and uh, the actual file, basically. So first is the buffer, which is uh, right now, you might notice that we don't actually have a buffer, but a buffer is just, again, it's just a place in memory. You can give it whatever you want, right? And that whatever happens to be our P1 here because I'm going to send to this file the actual memory that represents P1. What's the actual memory that represents P1? Well, it's just two integers. So if you calculate it's just those eight bytes, quite literally, we're going to write eight bytes to that file and that's it. We don't need to format it in any way, shape or form. So we're going to have to say here the address of P1, right? So that's where we want to take the data from. The second one is the element size. So now you can specify here basically an array 
of element. But what I want is just specify uh, the size of the element is really size of our point, which if we evaluate, we're going to actually get eight, right? It says down there eight U. So it's going to be eight bytes, of course, because an integer has four bytes. And since it's already aligned and everything, it's exactly eight bytes, right? Um, then the next one, since we're not really uh, writing an array to it, we're just going to say just take one point at that address because at that address, we only have one point, right? P1. Cool. And lastly, our actual file handler. Nice. And after we have called the fwrite function, we can take a look at the return value. That return value tells us how many elements, basically how many points it wrote to the file. So we can say here size underscore t uh, elements written. That's going to be the result of our fwrite function. And I'm going to say if elements written is zero, because it, we know that it's at maximum one. We couldn't have written more than one element. And it's zero if we first weren't able to actually uh, write any element or we called the function uh, in a wrong way, basically telling it, for example, to write um, whatever number of elements of size zero or some negative number or whatnot, right? So in this case, we're going to check if elements written is zero, then simply return two as our error code. Eh, let, let it be different than one. And when we debug it, we should actually see that it's, uh, it's properly. And of course, here at the end, like after we have written to the file, we want to close uh, this file because we don't have to do anything else with it in this case. So I'm going to just add an F close here, F close to out and be done with it. I'm not putting it after the if statement because if we didn't write any elements to it, we would have actually closed the program without uh, closing the actual file, which could lead to some problems. So now if you try to run this, you'll notice that nothing really happens on the screen. But if I try to look at the project folder, you're going, to, you're going to notice that a file called point.bin has been created and it has a size of eight bytes. That's what we would expect. If we try to add this, and now this works in Visual Studio, but if you're not working with Visual Studio, you can uh, search online for a hex editor. And I know of one that actually works and you can open it there. But because we're using Visual Studio, I can just simply open it here and it's going to open my hex editor because this guy is a binary file. It's not a text file. It's not the same thing. We're just purely looking at bytes. And here we can notice some really cool things. First is that we get eight bytes. That's nice. Then the first four bytes represent the first coordinate, the X coordinate, which we know it's 13 because here in uh, hexadecimal is 13, right? Due to the Due to the NDNS, it's reversed, but that's fine. Um, and the next one is most likely negative five. That's our Y coordinate. So if you take a look here, right, we have 13 and negative five. So those are the correct values written to our binary file. And if I try to change this, for example, if I change this to a negative one and run it again, yes, I want to reload it you'll notice that now it's all Fs. And that's correct because negative one is just uh, Fs in hexadecimal. And that's about all there is to actually writing to a file in binary, right? You just have to remember this guy returns the number of elements you wrote and you have to open it using these, uh, using this mode to write to it and don't forget to close it. That's all there is. You notice there's no parsing. You don't have to do any sort of parsing. Before we had a uh, an array of characters that was serving to us as a buffer, right? In which we would uh, write the actual the actual point formatted the way we wanted. But in our case, we just passed in the actual 
variable or another to that variable and its size. And like copy paste, it automatically copied the memory from inside that variable to uh, our file, right? Very, very simple. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to read from this file. So stay tuned for that. I hope you got something out of it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye.